Hey guys, it's Angela, and today I'm going to be telling you about all the books I read during the month of August. So during the month of August, I read a total of 17 books, which broke down to a page count of 7,752 pages. In terms of my star ratings, I had one two-star book, two three-star books, nine four-star books, and five five-star books. And as per usual, I'm going to start with the lower ratings and work my way to the top. So first, let's talk about my one two-star book, which is Some Kind of Animal by Maria Ramosco Moore. And I read this as an e-arc. It did come out in August. And this book is about a girl named Jo who has this sister, and her sister's her twin, and she lives in the woods, and she's completely feral, so she never comes out. So at night, Jo goes into the woods and gives her sister food and like runs around with her. But other than that, that's the only interaction that her sister has. So one day Jo is hanging out with some friends and her sister comes out of the woods and attacks the boy that Jo likes. And everyone there says that it was Jo who attacked the boy, but it was Jo's twin sister. But nobody knows about Jo's twin sister, so Jo really doesn't know what to do in the situation. So yeah, I really liked the premise. This book was really, really weird and I really liked how weird it was. My problems were with two things. One, the writing style. I really didn't mesh with it. Um, there were a lot of errors in the E arc and I know that because it's an arc that's like bound to happen and that's fine, like obviously. But there were so many errors in this book that the way that some of the sentences were structured were just so off that it took me out of the reading experience because all I wanted to do was restructure the sentence and fix it. So that was one thing. And then the other thing was just sort of the way that the book ended. Um, I think the author did a lot of really cool stuff in this book with the plot of Jo and her twin sister. And I was really intrigued about everything and she really had something going, but I just didn't like the way the book ended. It felt kind of anticlimactic and sudden and it just wasn't my favorite, but it was still a weird read and I'm still glad I read it. Now into my two three star reads. First starting with The Year Shakespeare Ruined My Life by Danny Jansen. I read this as an e-arc and it comes out on September 22nd. And this follows a girl named Allison who is super smart, super ambitious. She really wants to be the valid Victorian at her high school. And she's asked to direct the Shakespeare play A Midsummer's Night. And so she figures why not, it'll look good on a college application. So she starts directing this play, which turns into be this whole big disaster and just an adventure of things going wrong. And Allison also likes this girl named Charlotte, but Allison is in the closet and no one is really aware of her sexuality. So she's really struggling to come to terms with that and to want to pursue a relationship with Charlotte while also balancing the chaos of senior year in general, as well as the chaos of the Shakespeare play. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. I gave it three stars just because it wasn't super memorable, but it was still good and I still enjoyed it. And if it sounds interesting to you, I would definitely recommend it. My last three star book is Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Kleypas, and this is the first in her Ravenel series. I've been really getting into historical romance lately and the cover was pretty and the synopsis sounded interesting, so I picked it up. This follows a girl named Kathleen who's been recently widowed and she's living in this large house with her two other sisters. And then this man named Devin shows up and basically says, I've purchased your house and I'm going to start doing renovations and changing things up and basically invading your space. So they don't get off on the best foot. It's a hate to love romance. There were horses in this book. That was definitely my favorite part. Kathleen was a rider and trainer and I loved the scenes where she was riding and training the horses. I just love the whole equine element to this book. But other than that, it was just pretty run of the mill, pretty standard. Um, at the 75% mark, another romance was introduced between two different characters and that sort of shadowed over the main romance and sort of took away from that. So I didn't really like that part that much for that reason, but overall it was good and I enjoyed it and I'll eventually continue with the series. Now into my nine five-star books, starting with Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I've heard so many things about this book, so many people either love it or hate it. It's really hit or miss for some people, but for me, this was definitely a hit. 
This follows a girl named Alex who is attending Yale and she becomes part of this secret society and this book has an occult and ghosts and a lot of dark magic and a lot of dark topics and trigger warnings. So this is definitely not for the faint of heart and if you're interested I would go to Goodreads and check out the trigger warnings. But yeah, I really, really liked this book. I loved how dark it was and I just loved the atmosphere and I'm really excited to eventually pick up the second book whenever it comes out. Next we have Shadow Kiss by Rochelle Mead and this is the third book in the Vampire Academy series and this book is definitely my favorite that I've read in that series thus far. The book sort of took a darker turn um, and I really liked that turn that it took and the things that happened in here and it ended on a really big cliffhanger. So yeah, definitely my favorite in the series so far. This book follows Rose and Lissa and Rose and Lissa are best friends but Rose also has to protect Lissa from these dangerous vampires and yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed it and I'm excited to pick up the next book. Next up, A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCrate. This book follows a woman named Lizzie who works at a law firm and one night she's working late and she receives a call from her old college friend named Zach. And Zach says that his wife Amanda was found dead at the bottom of the stairs and Zach is now in jail and he's calling Lizzie to ask if she would represent him in court. And Lizzie doesn't really have a lot of experience with the whole homicide part of the law. She works more in finances. So this is really outside of her comfort zone, but he, you know, she wants to try to do a favor for a friend. So she begins to help with the case and basically represent Zach in court, even though she's not 100% sure that he didn't do it. So we're following that and her basically uncovering the truth. But then at the same time, we're also following the perspective of Amanda, the wife who has passed away. And we're following her in the days and the hours leading up to her death and basically sort of getting her point of view about everything. And I really liked the dual point of view that was in here. And yeah, this book was really twisty. I honestly thought that I knew what was gonna happen and I was like 100% that I knew basically how it was gonna end. And I was wrong and I love being wrong in thrillers because I honestly like, love thinking I know what's going on and then having the rug pulled out from under me. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. Next we have The Night Swim by Megan Golden and this is a book that's going to stick with me for a really, really long time. This book was so much more than just a thriller. This book follows this girl named Rachel who has a podcast called Guilty or Not Guilty and the point of her podcast is to essentially put the listeners in the jury box while a trial is happening and have them come to their own conclusions on whether they believe someone is guilty or not guilty. So her podcast has been really successful and for the third season she decides to change things up and instead of looking at a current murder trial, she switches gears and looks at a current sexual assault trial that features this boy who is well known and well loved and respected in his town. He's an athlete and he's just, there's nothing but good things to say about him, but he's recently been accused of sexually assaulting a different girl. And so she follows that trial and she gets a lot of backlash for it. Um, and in this book, she brings up so many good points regarding sexual assault. Of course, sexual assault is a really big trigger for this book, so I would definitely keep that in mind before proceeding. But yeah, this book was really powerful. While Rachel's in the process of attending the trials and just getting all the information about the case for her podcast, this girl named Jenny starts leaving her notes and telling her that her sister was sexually assaulted years prior and then her sister drowned in the ocean and her drowning was seen as either an accident or a suicide but Jenny believes that her sister actually was murdered and so she asks that if Rachel could also look into it while she's looking into the current sexual assault case. So we do follow two perspectives, the perspective of Rachel and the perspective of the girl Jenny whose sister has died. And yeah, this book was just really powerful. It's something that's gonna stick with me for a really long time. I read it as an e-arc and I definitely want to get my hands on the hard copy as soon as I can. Next up is 
Still House Lake by Rachel Kane, and I didn't know this when I picked this up, but this is actually the first book in a series. And in this book, we followed this woman named Gina, whose life was completely fine and normal until one day it was discovered that her husband is a serial killer and she had absolutely no idea. So her life falls apart. She is accused of being involved in the killings even though she has no idea. Her husband is put in jail and when everything settles and they sort of leave her alone, she decides to move with her two kids to a lake and change their identities and try to just start over. So they change their names and they try to move on and move forward with life, but then in the lake there's a body that's found and her identity starts to get out and people are pointing at her as being the killer and yeah it basically follows that she still talks to her husband who's in jail and it was really really good again thought I knew who it was or what was going on but I didn't and I love to be surprised like that and it did end on sort of a cliffhanger so I definitely want to pick up the next books when I can. My last four star book is the Stillwater Girls by Minka Kent. And if I had to compare this book to anything, I would compare this book to the horror movie Mama. That's because this book follows these girls who live in the woods with their mother in this cabin in the middle of nowhere. They have no electricity, no connection to the outside world. They sort of make their own clothes and they just live within those walls and that's the only life that they know. One of them is 19 and the other is 16 and then the youngest is eight. So their mother will like go and get groceries and stuff, but they never leave. So they don't know life outside of their small cabin in upstate New York. So one day the eight year old gets really sick and the mother leaves to bring her to civilization to get help. So after she leaves, days and days go by and then she hasn't come back and the two remaining girls are running out of food and winter is coming and they're essentially going to starve and they have no choice but to leave the cabin and go into civilization to get help which is very scary for them because they don't they've never had that human contact so it's sort of like in mama and then there's another perspective of another woman who lives on the outskirts of that wooded area and yeah this book was really really good i really liked the vibes it has um the plot twist could be hit or miss for some people i don't want to get too much into it because like i said it's a thriller personally i sort of like looked into the plot twist and i did enjoy it but it might not be for everyone but this is definitely a good book to read this time of year my next four star book and the biggest book i've read in my entire life is the stand by stephen king this book is 1400 pages and I had absolutely no intention of picking it up during the month of August, but here we are. This book essentially follows a pandemic, so reading a book about a pandemic during a pandemic probably wasn't my best choice, but I will say it just sort of added to the horror element of this book and I figured it's hopefully a once in a lifetime opportunity to read a book about a pandemic during a pandemic, but yeah. This book is a lot. It's 1400 pages and essentially it's about this super flu that takes over and then after that it sort of becomes a battle of the survivors trying to make civilization and move forward. I think there's like 3% of people left. There are not a lot of people left. Um, and so they're trying to move forward and then it becomes a battle of good and evil. This book is a lot. Like I said, this book has a lot of characters. Um, if you have any intention of picking it up I would definitely say make yourself a character list because you might get confused because we're following so many different people around the United States as their stories begin to intertwine. Regardless, regardless of its length I still really did enjoy it and really didn't find myself too bored like I was pretty engaged. I will say the most engaging and scary parts were definitely the first half as the flu ravishes the nation. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. There's a dog in here. His name is Kojak. He's the golden retriever. And I'll tell you right now, he does not die. He lives happily ever after. And uh, he was the best character in the whole book. But yeah, The Stand by Stephen King. I finished it in 12 days and I'm honestly happy I read it during this time. My last four star books are both romances. And the first one is The Roommate by Rosie Danon. And this follows this girl named Clara who has always had a crush on her childhood best friend. 
So then her childhood best friend contacts her and asks her if she wants to move out to California to live with him and sort of like find a new job for herself. And so she's like, yes, of course, she's so happy about it. She figures maybe this is her time to finally tell him how she's been feeling. So she moves out there and when she gets there, he goes, oh yeah, hi, welcome. Um, actually, my band and I are gonna go on tour, so and he leaves and he totally dips and she's like I just moved across the country for you and now you're leaving so he leaves and he goes it's okay I've got a roommate for you so in comes Josh who is renting the other guy's room and Clara's just sort of all over the place she doesn't even know if she wants to stay there anymore because the plans are obviously not what she thought that they were going to be but Josh moves in and she gets to know him and Josh works in the adult film industry and so there's a lot about that and it was very very interesting to learn more about that and I really liked Josh as a character and I really liked their romance as the book progressed and yeah this was a really fun read. And my final four star book is Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. This book follows a girl named Izzy who is the daughter of this author who wrote a bunch of books that were essentially about Izzy, like Izzy was the main character in these books and all of his books are really well known and well loved and then he dies and he leaves Izzy a castle. So she has never really been on her own before so she moves into this castle and when she gets there she is not alone because inside of the castle is this duke and he's blind and he's grumpy and he does not want her here. So basically they have to figure out what to do with the situation because right now Izzy legally owns it but also he does and so there's that whole power struggle. Also I really liked the blind representation in this book um, because this is a different time period things like chronic illnesses, disabilities, and mental illnesses were treated very very differently. So in this situation the Duke is afraid that people are going to come and see him as unfit and he's going to end up to be institutionalized. So he's really fighting for his independence and Izzy really helps him out with that. And their relationship is just so sweet and I really liked the discussion about being disabled during that time period as well as just being blind in general and how it makes him feel as a person and all that stuff. So yeah, this was the first book in Tessa Dare's Castle Ever After series and I really enjoyed it. Now into my five five-star books. First starting with Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. This was my second time reading this book and I read it alongside Chanel from Chanel Time and Kat from the channel Paperback Dreams and it was an absolute blast. We did a live show on it. I'll leave it linked down below. I had so much fun discussing this book with them and just reading it for the Krusty Book Club. It was such a blast and it was really fun to you know hear everyone's thoughts and of course Kat this book is like her entire brand so it was really cool to have her thoughts on it too and how her experience was reading this book for a fourth time I think but anyway this book is about Francis and Alad and it is not a romance which I love this book focuses on their friendship and Alad has this podcast called Universe City that Francis has always been a huge fan of and she starts to do artwork for it and this book is just basically about their entire friendship and Alad's secret podcast and just growing up and going off to university and how it affects us and this book is so diverse and so so beautiful. I love this book so much and I'm so glad that I was able to read it again this year. And my next five star read is the long awaited Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. We've been waiting forever for this book and it's honestly been worth the wait. If you didn't already know I am trash for Twilight. I recognize all the flaws but it's just very nostalgic for me and reading the books and watching the movies has just provided me with a lot of comfort. But with that being said, Stephanie Meyer's writing has grown so, so much. If you compare the writing from this book to Twilight, it's just night and day. It was so, so beautiful. I loved how much her writing has grown. And even though this book is essentially Twilight in Edward's point of view, you still get a lot more. I really liked learning more about the rest of the Cullens, especially Emmett. He gets a lot of time in this book and I really enjoyed exploring their characters more. It is super duper long, which some people thought it was too long. I honestly didn't mind. 
Um, but yeah, I loved this book so much and it was definitely worth the wait. My next five star book is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This book is definitely a heavy read with a plethora of trigger warnings, including grooming, sexual assault, just a whole bunch of stuff. Again, I would look at Goodreads before proceeding. If you think that there's subject matter in this book that might trigger you, this book is about a girl named Vanessa and we follow two different time periods, one of which is her time in school and how the relationship with her English teacher begins to develop. And then the other timeline is the present day with accusations coming out and her coming to terms with what she thought was an innocent relationship with her English teacher. This book is a really powerful read and it's a really, really important read. It was definitely difficult to read, but just so beautifully written and heartbreaking. And I really, really enjoyed it. The next book I have to talk about also deals with similar topics in My Dark Vanessa. So before reading it, I would definitely look on Goodreads to look at the triggers and just sort of go into it knowing they're there. And that book is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. And first and foremost, let's just take a second to appreciate how beautiful the cover is because, oh my goodness, I added this to my want to read on Goodreads list before I even read the synopsis. I read this as an e-arc and it does come out on September 15th and I will be immediately getting a copy. But this book follows this girl, Enchanted, who dreams of being a singer and it's all she's ever wanted. And at an audition, she meets this famous singer, Corey Fields, who is super well known and he basically tells her that I can get you an album and you have this beautiful voice and I can make you successful. And she's only 17 years old and I believe that he is 28 and he basically tells her, sign a contract with me, travel with me and you'll be a star. And at the beginning of the book, we find out that Corey Fields is dead and all signs point to Enchanted as she was there during the time of the murder. So we're also following dual timelines with this story, one being basically what led up to the death and then the second sort of the aftermath. And this book deals a lot with grooming and sexual assault. And like I said, all of the stuff in Dark Vanessa, don't quote me on this because I'm not 100% sure, but I heard that this book is sort of inspired by what happened with R. Kelly. Either way, this book was, again, like My Dark Vanessa, a really hard read. I honestly didn't anticipate to read two books like this this month, but I think that they're both really equally important. I really liked Enchanted as a character and I really just felt for her and just wanted her to be happy and be successful without the circumstances that she went through. But yeah, this book was absolutely beautiful and heartbreaking and when it comes out on the 15th, I would highly recommend picking it up. And finally, my 17th book, my fifth five-star read, Governess Game by Tessa Dare. This is the second book in her Girl Meets Duke series. I think that's what it's called. And this follows a Duke named Chase who has recently adopted his orphaned nieces who are younger and fatherhood is not something he ever anticipated to do and yet here he is taking care of these two young girls and he's looking for a governess and then Alexandra, our main character, stumbles upon this job and she sort of unintentionally becomes the governess for the girls and these two little girls are very difficult. They are so funny and they are so morbid. They're always like constantly like trying to kill and revive their doll. They're so funny but they are a handful and so Alexandra starts taking care of them and then her relationship with Chase sort of develops. I really, really loved this book. Tessa Dare's books are so, so funny. And I loved this book so much. I loved the relationship with the kids and sort of watching the kids come to love their uncle more and Alexandra and just all of that stuff. This book was so, so good and I gave it five stars. This series by Tessa Dare is definitely my favorite. So those are the 17 books I read during the month of August. This is the fourth month this year that I've read 17 books. So I really don't know what's going on, but I'm not mad about it. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below what books you read in August that you enjoyed or didn't enjoy. And thank you guys so much for watching and as always, have a good one.